Hey guys, in today's video, I'll be going over my greatest body parts of all time list. Basically, what I'll be doing is I'll be listing each body part, for example, the back, chest, biceps, whatever, and, you know, telling you who I believe had the best one. Obviously, this is a purely subjective video. However, I do base my decision off of shape, aesthetics, and mass, you know, to come to a pretty firm conclusion. Additionally, don't take anything too seriously in this video, as, like I said, this video is purely my opinion and is most definitely influenced by a whole lot of bias. So before the video starts, if you want to see content just like this, please consider liking and subscribing to my channel. With that all being said, let's get into this video. Alright, so let's start out this video pretty simple. I'm thinking about starting with calves. Now, there are a few bodybuilders that immediately come to mind. Of course, you have Dorian Yates, Mike Matarazzo, and even modern bodybuilders like Joel Thomas, who arguably has the best calves today. While all those guys have exceptional calves, especially Mike, the name that holds the title of the best calves is easily Eric Fankhauser. Now, I know judges could really care less about calves, however, Eric clearly had the best set of all time, as they were perfectly developed slabs of meat that just hung off his bone from every angle. Just trust me, guys, compare him with any other professional bodybuilder, and you'll see that, you know, barely anyone comes close to that level of development. Next, we have forearms, and once again, a guy like Dorian Yates immediately comes to my mind as he had some insanely developed and vascular forearms. Moreover, more modern guys like Rolly Winkler and Phil Heath arguably destroy Yates in that department. However, the true king of the forearms is no one other than Lee Priest in my opinion. Like Eric's calves, Lee's forearms just look like they sat on the bone, almost like, you know, like a chicken drumstick. Crazy vascular, round forearms that had great insertions as well. Combine that with perfect development and you get the best forearms of all time in my opinion. Moving on, you know we gotta talk about them. Let's take a look at the glutes. Now, I think this should be a no-brainer, as many of you know. Ronnie King Coleman easily had the best glutes of all time. Now, they weren't only the largest, they were also extremely shredded at almost every competition he competed in, maybe apart from like 2007, 2006, but you know, they were also really lowly inserted into the leg, which allowed him to develop, you know, the freakiest glutes in my opinion, and it is plain as day as why they were so freakish. They look like they came straight off of a spacecraft or like Area 51. Absolutely ridiculous stuff. It is so clear as to why he easily wins this spot. Sticking with legs, let's move to the hamstrings. While once again, Ronnie does come to mind as his were extremely well developed, they were never too crazy from the side. Now additionally, Big Rami falls into a similar boat as he looked insane from the side but lacked crazy detail from behind. But you know who had both? Phil the Gift Heath. Now, first off, from the side, they just hung off his leg, showing extremely well. Now, secondly, from behind, they were so, so dry. You know, there was rarely any lack of separation in his hamstrings whatsoever. The only person that really matches the level of detail is Ronnie, who may even be more freaky in the hamstrings, but he doesn't present them as well as Phil. Overall, Phil most certainly has the most well-rounded, developed, and conditioned hamstrings of all time. Moving to the front, let's take a look at the quads. If you've seen my top 10 best legs video of all time, you may know that Ronnie topped that list. Now, while I do believe that he was the best overall from behind and in the legs overall, Tom Platts easily wins from the front. His quads were by far the most aesthetically pleasing and well-developed of all time as they virtually had no weak points. Every visible head of his quad were, you know, perfectly developed. His insertions were phenomenal and he had an amazing quad sweep. Some of you may be wondering about Rami, and I'll tell you that, you know, he sure is big. He just doesn't have the same level of polish or condition as Tom or Ronnie in the quads. Going up, let's move to the midsection. Now, in my mind, there are two clear-cut candidates for this position. First, we have Ahmad Haidar, who had the most symmetrical, perfectly developed abdominal region with amazing genetics in his abs and serratus. Secondly is, you know, Brian Buchanan, who has the smallest waist of all time. However, he isn't as genetically gifted through the actual abdominal muscles. There are also guys like Sean Ray and Flex Wheeler who presented, you know, more famous midsections, I'd say. However, I don't think either of them are as good as these two. I probably would go with Ahmad, though, as his midsection muscles are genetically better than Brian's. 
Personally, though, I do prefer Bryant's midsection, guys. That that vacuum is so insane. However, it is undeniable that Ahmad's is the best by far, genetically and developmentally speaking. Turning it back around, no pun intended, we have a pretty controversial area, the back. While I could break it down into traps, lats, lower back, etc., I prefer to just lump all the smaller muscles of the back into the overall back category, which may make this even more controversial. Now, the three backs that you will immediately you know, have in mind are Dorian Yates, Phil Heath, and Ronnie Coleman. If you've watched my video on the top 10 best backs, you may know who I chose, so it shouldn't really be surprising to hear that I favor Dorian. I think he had the best combination of densely packed conditioned muscle, while also being super wide as well. Sure, Ronnie was, you know, wide and conditioned. However, I never thought he was as grainy in the back as Yates. Moreover, Phil was super dense, maybe the best in that area out of the three. However, he wasn't as wide, of course. Moreover, Dorian's lats from the front were just mind-blowing. I mean, he filled out that front lat spread like crazy guys, which only adds to why his back is the best in my opinion. Turning to the side, we have the shoulders, and in my mind, guys like Kevin Lavroni, Marcus Rule, and Phil Heath immediately pop up, since they had sheer mass or a three-dimensional look to their delts. Moreover, guys like Nasser and Roly had some phenomenal shoulders too. However, I would have to give this to the OG three-dimensional delt king, Kevin Lavroni. His delts were always a standout body part on his physique, whether it be from the front, back, or side. Extremely well-developed, conditioned, and of course, three-dimensional. While shoulders are certainly a close battle for first, this placing for Kevin was definitely influenced by personal bias, as he's one of my favorite bodybuilders. I could easily see you giving this to Phil or Marcus, or to be fair, anyone I've even mentioned for that matter. Moving down to the arm, let's take a look at the biceps. Once again, if you've seen my video on the top 10 best biceps, it shouldn't be a surprise to see Marco Savalainen winning on this list. Sure, guys like Arnold or Ronnie had some insanely peaked biceps, while others like Sergio Oliva had long full ones. However, Marco interestingly had both. Now, to be fair, guys, to be fair, his biceps were not super long, but they were perfectly rounded, they weren't short by any means, and they had extreme development with very impressive peaks as well. Now, personally, I've never seen anyone else replicate this level of muscularity in the biceps, similar to Ronnie Coleman in the glutes, so I think this is a rather easy win for Marco. Sticking to the arm, I'll go to the triceps now. This muscle is definitely a lot less clear cut than the last, as there are guys like Phil Heath, Roly Winkler, and Elie Priest who all have some of the most incredible, strided, and genetically gifted triceps of all time. Additionally, more recent competitors like Hunter Labrada show some great tricep genetics too, so there's clearly a lot of competition for the win here. Personally, I think Roly has the best triceps of all time, though, as I've never seen a tricep that is that full, conditioned, and bulbous. Sure, Phil and Lee have very comparable triceps. However, seeing a video or picture of Roly is just mind-blowing. His triceps are just so much freakier than the other two, as they present a similar level of freak factor as Ronnie's glutes. Once again, like Marco in the biceps, Ronnie in the glutes, Roly in the triceps. So while it was certainly close, I firmly believe Roly comes out on top. All right, so going back to the front, let's tackle the last muscle, the chest. While it may seem like an easy call to make, I do believe that the spot for the best chest isn't a clear cut and easily won battle. Right off the bat, though, you can definitely think of Arnold Schwarzenegger as his chest was what many refer to as, you know, the best of all time. And while you may be right, there are others like Ronnie, Franco Colombo, Big Ramy, and Lou Ferrigno that all present some insanely large and full and ripped chests. I do think that it is, you know, super close between Arnold and Ronnie, as Arnold was definitely more genetically superior in that aspect while Ronnie presented sheer mass and condition. Personally, as good as Ronnie is, I think Arnold had the best chest ever. It was just perfectly developed and flowed so well within his physique. Moreover, the genetic shape may be the best we've ever seen, as it was so lowly inserted and round. Definitely a win for Arnold, however, I could see someone choosing Ronnie if they preferred more modern standards. Alright guys, so that about does it for this video. These were all the major muscle groups or body parts that I felt would be cool to go over. I definitely think that the backs and maybe the hamstrings and quads will be debatable between you guys. However, I want you to remember that this is just my opinion. 
Anyways, I hope you all enjoyed this video, and I also hope to see you all in the next one. Thanks for watching.